Welcome everybody to the Tribal Mess webinar series. Today's webinar, The Nose Knows, uh, Meet Mazo Sanka, Iron Dog, um, will be presented and introducing you now to our moderator, Anthony Colson. Good afternoon and welcome to the COPS Tribal Methamphetamine webinar, training and technical assistance series sponsored by Strategic Application International Tribal Meth Fellows. My name is Anthony Colson, and along with Crystal Owen, we will be your moderators for today's webinar. Today's topic is ion scanning technology used in Indian country uh, for substance abuse. Before we begin, I need to let you know that this webinar service includes a feature that allows audio and any documents and other materials exchanged or viewed during the session to be recorded. By joining this session, you automatically can send to such recording. If you do not consent to the recording, please disconnect from the webinar at this time. Before we begin, I would like to let our participants know that the audio portion of today's webinar will be available along with the accompanying PowerPoint presentation. These materials should be posted the first part of next week and will be accessible from the methpedia.org under http colon backslash backslash www.methpedia M-E-T-H-P-E-D-I-A dot org. You'll find the audio files and PowerPoint presentation of previous webinars in the series there as well. During our presentation from our speakers, you, the audience, will be in a listen mode only. At the end of the guest presentation, you will have an opportunity to participate in moderated question and answer session, although our Q&A session will occur after the presentation. You may submit a question online at any time during the webinar. You submit a question to our presenters. Please select the Q&A drop-down menu on the right of your screen and type your question in the top box. Then click on the word send on the bottom right-hand side of the box. Use the manage button in the Q&A drop-down menu to view um, other items. At the end of the question and answer period, we will begin polling participants. Once the polling starts, the questions will appear in the right-hand panel under polling. Right under the Q&A window, attendees will then answer the polling questions. There are seven total. And then click Submit. We'd also like to note that the views of today's presenters are not necessarily the views of Strategic Applications International or the COPS Office. The U.S. Department of Justice was co-sponsors, uh, which sponsors the COPS Tribal Methamphetamine Grants for 2010 and 2011. Again, our topic today is the nose knows me, Mazazuka, the Iron Dog. Um, my co-moderator today is Chris Rowland, one of our COPS tribal meth fellows from the Sisseton Wapitan Oyate of the Lake Traverse Reservation in South Dakota. Our presenter will be Gary Kajakowski, the captain of police for the Bureau of Indian Affairs Law Enforcement Division station at uh, SWO. Besides being a meth fellow, Crystal is a meth coordinator for Sisseton Wapitan Oyate and has been in that position for over five years. She coordinates the tribal prevention efforts and acts as liaison between her tribal community and law enforcement. Captain Gary Kakowski is worked in the area of law enforcement in the uh, Oyate for the past 20 years. In 1993, he began his career as a police reservist before becoming a full-time tribal police officer. During his tenure, he was promoted to sergeant, and finally in 1999, he accepted the position of captain of police. Captain Gajkowski has been involved in numerous trainings, many of which were specialized with the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He has testified in Senate hearings in Washington, D.C. He works hard to acquire much-needed funding for tribal law enforcement agencies throughout Indian country. Uh, Crystal and Gary, welcome. Um, Crystal, go ahead. It's all yours. Oh, thank you, um, Tony. And thank all of you participants for tuning in today to the webinar. This is Crystal Owen, and we are talking about uh, Maza Shunka. In Dakota, Maza is um, iron, and Shunka is dog. So I'd like to greet all of you. And um, I want to just say before we get started that... Um, we are located on System Lofton, Dakota, Oyate. We're located on the Lake Traverse Reservation. We are um, in northeastern South Dakota. And I have been doing this meth prevention work for about five years and ten months. 
when I assumed this position, I wasn't fully aware of how much this work would affect my life and my community. And today we are going to share with you one of the projects we have implemented here on the Lake Traverse Reservation. Um, the next slide, please. So when we talk about meth, meth in our communities, we know that um, I've learned that meth takes, um, make, meth takes ev just about everything. And to, com to be completely honest, I didn't know a whole lot about uh, methamphetamines before I started. I knew more about prevention and how communities can be proactive in battling the addictions um, that bind us. But my eyes were opened when I saw that no one is immune when this drug comes into our communities. We are all affected and that even I had relatives who were using meth. You know, I have seen the full effects that meth has on families and how it can tear them apart. I have also heard the stories of young people in our communities who get paid in meth to babysit. You know, these are just some of the few things that, um, horrific things that are happening. Uh, just this week we buried a four-month-old baby whose um, babysitter was um, said to be high on meth. So I have been, I have seen meth take everything away from, um, you know, one who is addicted and that entire lives are often ripped apart. And it's always the children and the families who are left to pick up the pieces without even knowing what hit them. So today we're talking about a resource um, that we can use, that we are using among the system Mopton Oyate um, because we know we're not alone in this battle. Throughout many Native communities, we are in a state of emergency with methamphetamine addiction. So I want to um, talk today about the Mazashunka, the Iron Dog, and how we build our resources um, within the community working uh, with our tribal police. You know, they do the best they can to battle this drug, but until we start working together with other um, programs, agencies in our community, we really, until we do that, we really won't notice any um, type of improvement. So I just want to, um, be, before we get started, I wanted to kind of give you that background about, you know, where we are here at Siston Wapton and what we are seeing um, in our police station. So I'd like to um, turn the microphone now over to uh, Captain Gary Gajkowski, and he could talk a little bit about an introduction to the machine, um, how it came to be, um, a little bit like that. So welcome, Gary. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, a while back, we um, we did receive a grant through the Department of Justice, um, uh, 2007, and one of the things and it was a good grant for us. I mean, it, we just started seeing the meth problem um, come about around the reservation. We heard a lot about it, didn't know much about it. Um, had an opportunity under the grant to purchase this machine. Um, we heard, uh, I think it was three affiliates tribe up in North Dakota had the machine. Uh, we talked to them. They liked the machine, it was, um, so we we ended up purchasing it. And a lot of training with the machine. All the officers went through the training. Um, it's a very expensive machine, um, and just to keep it uh, up and running, it's daily. You know, we have to take daily care of it and good care of it. Um, I, I designate one officer and Crystal to keep the machine maintained. Um, if anybody has any questions or something happens to it, they take care of the machine. Um, for the most part, it's it's been a great machine for us. Like I said, it's a tool for us to use. Um, we, we've we borrow it out or, um, to the housing. We train the housing staff, the workers, um, to go out to our communities, to our homes, and test, how, test the houses. Um, so it's been working fairly great for us. It's just, uh, like, it's just like a canine, um, like a drug test. Um, you know, we just gather more evidence, more evidence we can gather on a house for a search warrant or a vehicle or on people's property, um, coats and clothing, whatever. We can use this as evidence. So it's been, I feel like I said, a good machine for us to use. Um, we, you know, now we're really seeing the effects of the meth around the, on the reservation. It's it's here. It's it's taking it's it's affecting many members and it just doesn't seem to want to go away easy it's it's hard 
and then we're, it's a battle. It really is a battle for us, and I would imagine for any res reservation, for all communities that, are, that this is taking place. Um, but for for us, it's it's uh, it helps. I mean, it, it just gets it gets it up in the community that we do have this machine. We want everybody to know that we have this machine, just like a canine. We want to be visible, get it out there, and um, test homes, and and people are aware that you know the more stuff. The more evidence we gather, you know, the housing can, you know, deal with the people we're having problems with in the housing communities, do evict them, move them on, or, or just even do um, court order, you know, to test homes, test their house, and just, you know, keep on the people, get them into treatment, you know, the best we can to help the people to get off this drug. And this Maza Shunka, the, the machine, what it does is, um, if, if we could get a picture, Sarah, over to the um, over to the machine, we could show you what it looks like. The machine is a mobile trace scanner, and what it does is it um, can sample on people, homes, offices, cargo, vehicles. Just about anything that um, phys uh, has you know physical ma uh, material, it can detect tiny microscopic amounts of particles um, or vapor. So this trace transfer is a very powerful detection technique that um, I think there's only probably right now two tribes that are utilizing this machine. Even a nanogram is a billionth of a gram. So like one second out of 34 years, that's how. Um, when you want to look at it that way, or the concentration of one sugar packet in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Um, that's how much that real tiny that it can detect. So the narcotics it detects are uh, cocaine, heroin, THC, methamphetamine, ephedrine, um, MDMA, morphine, amphetamines, and MDA. Our officers, um, maybe Gary can tell you about um, the officer training that we had um, on the machine and, you know, kind of how that the process works with our officers um, in that sometimes we have to train over and over. Yes, like I said, when we first got the machine, we trained. Um, the, the company sent out a representative. Um, all, it was pretty much almost an all-day training. Um, we all went through it. We all tested the desk we sat at, you know, other things in the room, and it was amazing, you know, how just to see this work. I mean, it even picks up uh, gunpowder um, and explosives. So, you know, everybody got comfortable with the machine. It's it's, it's really simple. It's not, it's not that hard to work. You just, you know, a few buttons you got to push on the machine, you know, to you know calibrate it. Um, you s just take a little pad, you swab something really good. A uh, desk top, you put it in the machine, push calibrate, and it'll read whatever you know. If there's a drug that's on that um, um, desk that you're at, and then it'll tell you what kind of drug it is. Um, so for the for the officers, you know, they can take them out in the field, the pads, if they want to. Um, if they think there's something uh, they they want to swab, they're on a call, they're on a you know taking a complaint from someplace, you know, at casinos, whatever, you know, we can swab it, bring it back to the police department test it and um, go from there as far as if there's a case that, that needs to be, you know, presented to the prosecutor. But for the most part, the, you know, the training is, is uh, you know, for the, it's the, for the officer and Crystal that have to maintain it. That's probably the hardest training for the machine. Um, cause you, I mean, and the company is very, help, very helpful. Um, if you can, they can't do it over the, f um, the computer or the phone, um, they'll come out and help, you know, get get something that's fixed. I don't think we've had them have them come out at all yet. Um, whatever the problems that we've had, they've we've taken care of over the phone or on the computer. So it's it's a very good machine and as far as training um officers would be a pretty simple training for the for the officer staff or anybody other staff. And like Gary said, we had um you know several trainings for our officers and also for our housing maintenance because really um when we first we're going to purchase this machine. In, our, in the grant, we can either purchase, um, we have over about 600 um, homes uh, in our housing authority. We were gonna purchase 600 home testing kits. Um, it, you know, can you figure at 60 to $100 a piece, that's quite a large chunk of money. 
and this machine cost $40,000. So what we did is we purchased the machine instead of the home testing kits because uh, in realistically many of us know in our communities that um, until we get these processes in place, those uh, home testing kits that we would have bought um, five years ago probably would have still been sitting somewhere. You know, and they, that money would have went to waste. So it's a really good um, uh, bargain, you know, when you think about about that. It, co it does cost 40000 It probably costs, um, you know, 5000 a year to maintain um, with, the, with the supplies. But it, if, you, if, you're, if you're working with your police officers, um, you know, it's good because they can have a handle on using it. But more importantly, the Indian housing. You know, we all know the dangers of a meth house. Exposure uh, to cancer-causing chemicals that saturate the walls, carpets, and other building materials, uh, lead, the mercury, the, an, um, the anhydrous ammonia, iodine. These are all common products of methamphetamine when they're cooking it. Chemicals such as solvents or paint thinner may be um, disposed of in the plumbing or poured onto the ground around these our homes. And most properties, um, when, you, when they're uh, cooking meth, they're going to have smells of cat urine, ammonia, um, solvents, or some kind of a metallic smell. I know Gary's mentioned when we go into a home where meth is being used, right away he could detect that metallic on his, um, you know, inside his mouth. He could, it, it's very strong. So household tip-offs are uh, the presence of lye, heat, uh, Coleman fuel, peroxide, pseudofedrin, coffee filters that are brown, propane uh, bottles, altered fire extinguishers, red or yellow stained walls, all of these things um, are what we look out for when our uh, housing maintenance goes into the homes. Once somebody moves out, here's how it works. Uh, once somebody moves out, um, well, let me, let me back up just one second. Maybe Gary can give us a, 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 um, an, a scene of what happened, how we first came to um, use the machine when we had so many people reporting on uh, methamphetamine being used in our housing homes. Let's go for that first. So we were um, getting all these calls and complaints of dealers, um, the meth, um, pills, um, marijuana, that's probably our top three drugs on the reservation here right now. But um, so many complaints and we started identifying, tracking these complaints and where they're at in the housing. Well, and then I went and got with Crystal's program and got her information that she was taking down under her program, and it was matching up. So what we decided to do is, and I talked to the housing authority, I said, what do you need for us to get in the house and test these houses? He said, just a complaint. I need someone to write a complaint. So I wrote a complaint on the homes that we felt, you know, the dealers were, you know, people were using meth and dealing meth. And so we decided to test 11 homes in uh, Agency Village out here, and all the homes tested positive for a drug, mostly meth. Um, there was one with marijuana, but it, it just, you know, it just gave us more, um, not excited, I don't want to say excitement, but just, you know, everything's working out. I mean, we're, the information we're getting uh, from law enforcement and Crystal's program, it was validating to us that, you know, this is working, the machine is working. Um, so then the council kind of got wind of it in, in housing, and we kind of stepped back a little bit and said, wait, now let's, let's try to do something else. Let's do some proactive stuff with the machine. Um, housing, because of, of the way the leases were written up in housing that, you know, they wanted to, uh, didn't want to blame people that move into a house that maybe the other person had meth in it. So we stepped back and we said, okay, well, let's just do the homes that people are moving into, and we'll go in before they move in, test the home, if test positive, housing will clean it, get it cleaned up, we'll test it again, and until there's no more reading in that house. So once the readings were clear, the people are allowed to move in. So that's where we're at today with the housing. Um, so they'll come, get the machine, they do their cleaning, get the house ready, and then you know they'll 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 test it, or we will <coughs> test it, and you know to give people safe houses to move into. And so on the screen, you can see Mother Shunga sitting there um, in his seatbelt. So when we take him out, um, you know, the $40,000 machine, we do have to be very careful. And what we'll do is we'll go into the home. Now, this home, this machine is going to heat up to 250 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. It's, it gets real hot in there. And so um, we use 
uh, rubber gloves, and we have these little tiny testing strips. Well, they're about a, maybe two inches long testing strips, and they have tiny microscopic holes in them. What we do is um, when somebody moves out of a house, we'll go in there with the housing authority maintenance guys. We'll swab down the walls in every room, and then um, we'll start We'll start with the kitchen. We'll swab it down the walls, the counters, the cabinets. We'll put it into the machine. And within um, probably not even a minute, it's going to give us a reading. Um, Sarah, if you can switch to the next slide. You can see the machine. That's a picture of the machine in one of our homes that we, um, we went into. Sarah, you want to go to the next one, please? And so this, it's going to see, you'll see on the uh, PowerPoint there, there's a red uh, mark, and so our red line. And that, um, in that screen, it, it's going to tell what if it's meth, cocaine, heroin, uh, THC. This particular house tested positive for meth, methamphetamines. So what we do now is this machine we really can't, um, you know, we're not out to put anybody in jail, but we're out to create awareness. So what, what will happen is the housing now knows that what rooms that or that this entire house has uh, meth has been smoked or used in this home. And according to the readings, um, we, they have different levels. Um, so the housing will know, and what we'll do then is they'll clean it up. They, they go through a special cleaning. They clean the ducts, uh, the, ducts the ventilation system. They'll uh, paint the walls with a special oil-based paint that they found. Um, they, if there's carpeting in the home, they pull out the carpet. Um, these are homes where meth is being used but not cooked. So they, we do all the precautions of the cleaning, and, the, <clears throat> and then um, when it's all clean and done, I'll come in again with the machine and retest that very same home to make sure that it is zero uh, traces of any illegal drugs. When the next uh, tenant comes to sign their lease, he goes into the housing, and they tell them, okay, your home has been tested. It is free of drugs. There's no illegal drugs in that home. It's tested. It's clean. Now sign here on this line if you agree to our um, lease that says well, if we come back in six months or within the next year and do a routine uh, maintenance on the home, do routine testing with our Mazashunka, if there are any illegal drugs present, you are going to be subject to eviction. And so that makes the tenant aware that they are going to be watched, that it assures them that they are moving into a drug-free home. So that's um, creating awareness in our community. You figure we have uh, 600 homes and at least an average of um, five to eight people living in each home. You know, that's a lot of people that are being, um, being uh, notified or, you know, they're, they're being aware now that our tribe, through our system often housing authority, we are not going to um, put up with with this um, with the drugs anymore being uh, abused in our homes. And then, Sarah, if you can switch to the um, next slide, there's a <clears throat> you could see it a little bit better. Um, that uh, next one, you could see it a little bit closer. Um, uh, some of the readings on there. And then um, after we get the reading, then we'll we'll clear it off. But this advanced technology and convenience um, not only helps our police officers to be more effective, but it also helps to ensure um, their safety and the safety of those who work for the Tribal Housing Authority when they go into these homes. I mean, when Gary was telling us about the first, uh, we got a report on like 38 homes that were being, um, people were using methamphetamines in. The housing let us go in and test. The first 11 homes that we took this machine into, they were all positive for meth. And that's when housing authorities said, oh, wait, we got to shut this down because we don't have anything in, in place. We, don't, we can't go evicting anybody because you know what happens. People start blaming each other. And that, the whole reservation started was in an uproar. People are like, well, you know, they got this machine. They're coming around. They're, we're all going to be evicted if they, you know, if they find drugs. And, you know, people were saying, well, I didn't know. So and Sally came over to my house and when I was gone on the weekend. They stayed here. They used drugs while I was gone. I shouldn't be responsible. You know, all of these things. Everybody began uh, having all these excuses, blaming one another. And so that's why we had to step back and housing um, the board, well, along with the tribal council and, and our um, a tribal attorney, they set up this policy that says 
you know, this is how we're going to do it. And uh, uh, Sarah, if you could go to the next uh, slide. There's a poster of uh, Maza Shunka that um, we uh, use to get out there. And you'll see on there, I mean, it takes the whole community, right? So on this poster in the bottom right-hand corner, it says, drug dealers, get out, go away, leave, not wanted. We made probably about 20, 25 of those signs. And they're probably like three by five. And we put them out into every one of our housing communities. We put them out there so that, um, you know, when people drive into the housing, this is what they're going to see. And, you know, some people had complaints. Well, it makes the place look a little ghetto. But, you know, we're we're having this problem. We're on epidemic proportions with our methamphetamine um, problem. So, uh, Sarah, can you go to the next slide, please? So when we talk about um, protecting our homes, we're not only just talking about protecting our homes, but we want to protect our children who are living in, the, in these homes. You know, they are um, seeking answers just like we are, all of our different programs, housing, um, the meth and illegal drug problem needs to be addressed. And we hope, you know, that with our, um, our uh, agreement with housing and how we're working hand in hand with our tribal housing authority that we can help to continue to create this awareness because being proactive in this way is better uh, than doing nothing at all. And I understand, um, uh, you know, I've heard from other housing authority um, staff and, you know, uh, board members from around the country. And, you know, a lot of the times they'll say, well, you know, it just doesn't seem uh, feasible to implement something like this. But, you know, number one, we have to start changing our attitudes about, about that. And if we say we can't, it can't be done, then it can't. But, you know, our program here is proof that, um, it can be done, and it's not, you know, it, it's probably going to take some time to perfect it. We've been going now for um, probably about a year and a half, and, you know, it takes time to perfect it. People come and go, housing staff, we got to train new people, um, you know, every now and then, but if we just keep, uh, you know, um, keep on this and, and make sure that it's something that's important to us because, number one, those babies that are living in those homes, that's kind of uh, what, what we're protecting. But I just want to, um, I just kind of finish with that and give you, uh, our participants, some time to ask questions and hope, you know, we, we can try and answer them uh, the best we can to involve you in this, engage you in this conversation. So, Tony? Hello? Does anybody wait, have any Wait, wait, yep, 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 yep. I just muted my phone. I'm sorry, folks, for doing that. Um, <laughs> Uh, thanks, Crystal and Gary, um, and we're looking forward to um, some questions, uh, the question and answer portion of today's program. By way of reminder, we'll be able to pose, you will be able to pose questions to our presenters during the question and answer session, which will begin shortly. Before we take questions, immediately following the webinar, you will receive a, receive a, you will receive a brief online evaluation or polling. Please take a few minutes of your time to assist us providing assessment and feedback. We appreciate your input. If you have questions about the materials presented today that did not get answered in the moderated question and answer session, please email them to our presenters at the end of the session, and you see the screen up there. Uh, the contact information is available uh, to you if, if your questions don't get answered or you come up with a question later on. Now, at this point of the program, we're going to open the webinar for questions and have been submitted by the audience and ask our presenters to address them. As a reminder, uh, as a reminder, um, to pose a question to our presenters, please select the Q&A drop-down menu and type your question in the top box. Then click on the word send on the right side of the box. And I already uh, have a few questions in there. Where are they? Um, already, I guess. I guess they're. Uh, one question that we have is: um, since you began the program, have you seen a decrease in contaminated homes since you have gotten the policies that you needed in place? Um, this is Captain Gajkowski here. Um, yeah. No, we have not. Um, we know there's more homes that we need to get into. Um, one thing that happens and may happen on other reservations is once we start getting out there, we see a decrease in the use. So we, a lot of information 
that's out there we don't hear anymore, things people quiet down. It's like a roller coaster ride, and then it's going to pick up up up, up again. Um, okay. So it's right now, like I said, we are in the feet deep. You know, we're in, we're we're in it right now, and the more homes that we're testing, the better. And and I would say within a couple of years, we should start seeing a drop. The more and more, the more homes that we test, the better. And um, we, that's what we are continuing to trying to do is get out there more and more. So we we can. So you're still that. too early in the program to to really yeah. have uh, results. Yes. But do you get a lot of conversation? Um, people are awareness. Um, uh, they're out there and they're signing these policies. So do you get a lot of conversation about the uh, about the policy and the use of Mazazuka? For me, not the policy wise. Just the use of the machine is what I get a lot. I mean, I attend a lot of meetings with the elders and whatnot around around the communities, and they they welcome that machine. Bring that machine. They're, they're always the Kushis are telling me to bring that machine. The schools, you know, all the travel programs. They want their places tested. Um, we also do drug testing for the programs. But yeah, it's it's a big uh, talk to bring that machine and get everything tested because it's. Uh, it's something that's it's out there. This this meth and other drugs and pills and stuff. So it's it's good that you know this is a proactive and we're taking, definitely using it as a proactive right now. Very good. The uh, does it is there a cost? Uh, our next question is: Is there a cost to maintain um, the machine? Or, uh, it, you know, to get it cleaned or recalibrated at certain parts. It, um, we uh, we calibrate the machine um, on a daily basis. Um, we clean it uh, uh, weekly. It's clean. There's a whole process to uh, maintaining the machine, and I'm going to say it costs between four and five thousand a year for depending how much you use it. Um, the more you okay. use it, you know, like you have to buy the testing strips and and those types of things. So um, I'm going to say about four to five thousand a year um, for us. Okay, very good. Um, and let me see, that's two questions. Um, and uh, we have a, a question um, uh, from Belinda. Again, I think you mentioned it once, but how much does it cost for the device? Um, the device itself costs about $40,000. For, for the machine, and um, you know, like I said, if we would have bought uh, purchased home testing kits, and you figure at least, um, if we have 600 homes here, if you figure at least, uh, I'm going to say, 65 dollars for a home testing kit, you know, that would have been about 39 thousand dollars right there that we would have spent on a one-time, one-use kit for all of our homes. This way, we can uh, with this machine, we can we can also we can test our 600 homes, you know, uh, as many times as we 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 feel the need to. Uh, like Gary mentioned, we uh, have gone into our tribal um, offices. We've tested um, tribal programs. We've tested uh, the bathrooms at our tribal uh, headquarters. We've tested at our schools. We've tested the student lockers. Ran it by. We've tested it. We've used it at our tribal casinos. We have three tribal casinos here. So um, we, we've we've gone and tested uh, hotel rooms. Um, in one instance, somebody was smoking meth in a hotel room. They left the bulb, the light bulb there. So we went in. Uh, they we tested. We saw what levels it, it was. Uh, the guys they hired some professional cleaners to come in, clean it up. We went back and tested again. It was clean. So then they can open that room back up to the public. So um, you know th that that was one way. Uh, you know, of doing it, but yeah, it, it, the machine costs about forty thousand dollars, about four to five thousand a year, to maintain it. Um, and of course, you have to have somebody who, you know, have at least a couple people who are, um, you know, willing to uh, really watch. You know, Mazashunka. It's just like um, you th think if you have a pet, you know, a, a real dog, you have to really uh, drug dogs. You really take care of them, and that's kind of how we treat our iron dog too is that you know we treat it um because it is a very spending machine we want to get um continue to get the most use out of it that we can okay 
Um, we have a question uh, from uh, Sharon. Um, have you ever tested a home that's been occupied? Yes. Uh, the first 11 homes, um, the housing, when we first started this, we, we kept getting complaints from um, community members. Go to house 54, 29, 16. These people are using meth in these homes. You need to get it checked out. So we go in there, and um, let, me, let me let Gary explain a little bit more on that part. Yeah, we also, like I said, it is a tool for us, you know, when the people are occupied. If we do a search warrant on the house or an officer is in a the house, they can um, respond to a call or uh, whatever call, a complaint. Um, like you said, it's, it's a tool. If we made an arrest in that house and there's evidence in that house that we need, we can bring the machine in, you know, test, test it, um, and go from there. Present it, and that's just more evidence we're gathering with the machine. Um, if we want to bring the canine in there, if we, you know, if we see paraphernalia around the house, we're going to canine just to confirm it. You know, as a prosecutors love that. The more evidence you can get, the better. So, like I said, it's part of an evidence, just like the canine, just like a drug testing kit. You know, to test the homes, whether they're occupied or not occupied. Very good. Um, we have uh, um, uh, one of our uh, attendees, George, is very interested in the policies uh, that you developed. Um, the uh, uh, instead of asking you to copy uh, a set of policies for the participants. Um, maybe it might be better for George to use the contact information to get a hold of uh, you either by email or by phone, Crystal or Gary, and and discuss um, policies. I don't know whether that's you know private to the tribe or things like that, but we, uh, George, we encourage you to contact and communicate with Gary and Crystal about the current policies they use. Yeah, uh, that'd be fine. Okay, um, and a question and that. Another few questions we'll um, take in now. What are some of the challenges you're facing uh, testing homes that have been occupied prior to the start of this program? What are so? Can you say that again? What are some of the challenges? Yeah. I, yes. Um, um, so you have you have a home that had had prior occupants. Um, uh, I, I, so do does when that home tests positive and you can't prove that it's the president occupant, uh, do you make something or do something that's um, with prior occupants of the home? Do you make contact with them or uh, do something with them at all? No. Um, okay. Like I said, you know, usually for the most part, we've been finding out that the homes that we test match up with the information that. Uh, um, our department receives as far as drug drug information, and at that point we're unable to do anything. But you know it's still noted that so and so lived in Unit Two at one time, and it did test positive. Unit Two has tested positive. Um, prior um, occupants now, you know, don't use aren't aren't meth users or anything. But you know it's just information gathering for us as law enforcement just to validate, you know, other information that we get and that's really important so we can start connecting the dots with these uh, drug users and sellers and dealers. Okay. And not only that, but um, when once somebody um, with this new policy in place, if somebody, um, okay, so they're, the people who are moving in now, let me say six months now, everybody who, uh, all the new tenants who have moved in within the last six months, they know that they are getting a drug-free home. They know that their home is not have, it does not have any traces of illegal drugs. Um, so what the housing tells them is, okay, if we, we come back and we find out during routine maintenance uh, within the next year of your lease, if we find anything, you are going to be subject to eviction, plus you are going to be responsible for the additional cleanup uh, fees that you know that it's going to take to you know buy this special oil-based paint that they use and and uh, you know do all this um, work to the home that to get it cleaned up and make sure it's it's safe for the next family to move in. So I think that really helps um, you know again for uh, when people 
they know now what they're coming into. Um, you know, prior to six months ago, they didn't know what they were. What, you just get a home and you go in it. Um, you know, it could have high levels of any type of drugs. And um, who knows if our kids are allergic to this methamphetamine, some of the chemicals that are in it, it could be making them sick. So. Um, Thank you. The last question that we'll, we'll take um, uh, from Belinda is, um, does the company uh, come to you to do training or do you send your officers out to do training or do you have people that are certified to train other officers with the use of the machine? Um, uh, the, the company that we purchased it from, they come to us for the training. And generally, um, it's not really anything about really being um, certified, you know, but it, it's not a really a, lo a lengthy process. Probably, um, I'm going to say maybe a, a one day of training. It could, you know, we pay for uh, the trainer to come. And when we first purchased it, you know, it was he just came and did the training. Um, if we want them to come back again to train a new set of people, then, of course, you know, we're going to be responsible for paying his travel and paying his fees. So, but um, that's uh, that's another, um, you know, a, a cost that can be expected. But, Gary, you want to add anything? So, yes. And, oh, and uh, what we do have is... Um, we have been composing as a result of all of these. It's creating awareness about not only meth and other illegal drugs in our community, but it's helping our uh, community, our police department, our judicial, our court, to take a look at our drug codes and what we have um, right now in place. And so it's, uh, what, we've do, what we're in a process now is um, updating our drug codes. Our, or having a, we're, gonna, um, we're in a process of um, getting approved an anti, a comprehensive anti-drug code for the system Wapton Oyate that will um, encompass all of these problems that we're having um, with meth in our own community. So, you know, and I know for many other tribes, th those drug codes are very important, and I think a lot of them, they're probably in the same boat as we were with, you know, trying to get them updated and, and get them up to par so that our officers, in turn, can, uh, once they start charging these drug dealers, um, you know, they'll have the codes and the laws to back them up. All of these things are connected. Well, very good. I, I thank you um, uh, very much uh, on behalf of SAI, the Met Fellows, the COPS Office. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Crystal and Gary um, today and our audience for taking time. We've got a lot of questions uh, in, which is really good. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, the slide's up. The polling is out on the right side. If you could take take advantage of that, we'd appreciate it. If you have any additional questions related to this call, please send or email to um, Captain Gajkowski or Crystal Owen. Uh, we've also listed the location on the Metropedia website where the audio recording and PowerPoint can be located should you or someone you know wish to access them later. And believe me, from our experience, from our 40-odd webinars, uh, these get accessed a whole lot after the presentation. So, uh, again, thank you for uh, those who only be listening. Um, again, the location of this is on www.methpedia.org slash pops hyphen tribal hyphen math. Uh, thank you, and this concludes today's training and technical assistance webinar. We very much appreciate your attendance.